It is an absolute shocker what information is just readily available on the network if we simply know where to look. And one of those places is looking for NetBIOS related information. The Network Basic Input Output System, NetBIOS, has been around for decades and it never scaled really, really well, but it's still alive in something called NetBIOS over TCP IP. And one of the great things about NetBIOS is that there's a lot of information that we can discover, including computer names, shares that are available on the network, and services that are all being advertised or promoted as part of NetBIOS. And what I thought would be fun to do is let's go ahead and use the command line interface and some graphical user interface tools to enumerate some network devices using NetBIOS. Now on a Linux box, we don't have the native tools like NBT stat, this NetBIOS over TCP statistics that we would have on a Windows platform, but we have other tools. For example, we have Nmap and ZenMap. So let's go ahead and launch ZenMap. Now to get there, we could just go to a command shell and simply type in ZenMap, or we could go to applications and go down to information gathering and then down through the menu system, go to ZenMap. We'll maximize that screen as well. And let's do a scan of 192.168.1.1. And I'm gonna use the option of a dash uppercase O and that O is going to tell Nmap to, if it can, extract the operating system that's running on that platform. And we'll press enter to launch that scan. So it did a port scan and it found various ports open, including NetBIOS SSN, which it shows us TCP 139. And if we saw UDP port 137 or TCP 138 or TCP 139, those are all related to NetBIOS. And here, 139 specifically is the NetBIOS session service. This scan also identified that it's very likely some flavor of Linux that's currently running on that host. Now, the benefit of knowing that 139 is open is that we now know that this device at dot one is running some type of NetBIOS service. Now, here on Windows 10, we can simply click on the Windows icon, type in CMD, and bring up a command prompt. And one of the basic tools that we can leverage right here on Windows platform is a command called nbtstat. If we type in nbtstat and press enter, that's going to give us all the options that would follow nbtstat. And there's a couple that I'd like to bring your attention to. One is nbtstat dash lowercase a. If we do an nbtstat space dash a, it's going to give us the NetBIOS over TCP information regarding that host. If we use a capital dash a instead, we can put in the IP address of that host instead of the NetBIOS name. Another one that I love is dash C, which is to show us the cache. And that's a very quick way to see the other NetBIOS machines on the network, including their IP addresses. So from the scan we did over on our Kali Linux box, we know that 192.168.1.1 is running some NetBIOS services because it had TCP port 139 open. So what we could do here is do an NBT stat space dash A, actually we should do a capital A, and actually put in the IP address of 192.168.1.1 and press enter. And that's come back with a list of names here on the left. And next to it has some codes. Now the Mac, <laughs> the Mac address I can darn well guarantee you is not all zeros. So perhaps this device at dot one, which does have some NetBIOS services running, isn't fully compliant with Microsoft's NetBIOS over TCP IP. Because normally that would come back as well with the actual Mac address of that device that we just queried. And regarding these codes right here, let's bring up a couple of wiki articles regarding NetBIOS codes. So as we bring those in, I've got two articles up. They're both on Wikipedia. One is NetBIOS over TCP IP, and the other is just NetBIOS. And if we scroll down through these articles, they have a lot of great information, including the history of NetBIOS. Here we have a section called NetBIOS suffixes. And it indicates that the 16th character of a NetBIOS name indicates the service type. So a 00 would be the workstation name, three would be Windows Messenger service, 20 would be a file service. And then we have a couple here referring to browser services. Now, a long, long time ago in a galaxy far away, we didn't have Windows Internet name service and DNS that may have been running in everybody's network. And networks that were relying solely on NetBIOS were using NetBIOS and these browser services for the resolution of NetBIOS names to their corresponding IP addresses. And for group names, the codes change a little bit. So if we take this information and we scroll over just a little bit, we can identify some of these. Here's a 1D, which would be a master browser. A 1E would be browser service selections and a group of 00 would be the actual work group or domain name. The 03 represents Windows Messenger service and 20 represents file services. So we can learn quite a bit just by what NetBIOS information is being offered by the hosts on the network. Now to take it a step further, we could also use commands like net use. Now for the net command, if we do a net and press enter, 
it's going to give us a whole list of options that we can use with the net command. So we have net use and net view along with many others. So if we wanted to view, for example, the shares on the device at 192.168.1.1, we could type in net space view and then backslash backslash the IP address of that device at 192.168.1.1 and press enter. And what that's showing us is that we have a share called my passport that is available over the network. There's also graphical user interface tools as well that we could use for NetBIOS enumeration. For example, if we open up a browser and we type in NetBIOS enumeration, and then I'm going to put in site colon sourceforge.net and press enter. This is the one I'm looking for right there. If we select that and then we scroll down just a little bit here so we can download the Win32 binary for it, we could download that. And then once it's downloaded, we could extract it and run it. And then we can scan a range of IP addresses. So we have some scanning going on as well as the NetBIOS enumeration from those devices. Now in the settings, we can also specify as far as the port scan, what ports do we want to scan for? And regarding the connection, if we've compromised a domain username and password and we want to try to log on with that, we can put that in here as well as part of our scan. And that will give us even more information about those devices. So I'm going to click on cancel. I'm going to put in the range of 192.168.1.1 all the way through 192.168.1.254, which is the usable IP address space on my 192.168.1 network. And I'll click on scan. And that'll take just a few minutes to go ahead and run through. And as a result, I can have a nice easy way of looking at the NetBIOS related information that returns to me about those devices. So it found the 1.1. We can expand that while the scan continues. Under NetBIOS names, if we expand that, this represents the same type of information that we viewed from the command line with NBT stat. Except instead of giving us the codes, it actually told us what the actual codes represented. In this nugget, we've taken a look at what can be collected and extracted with enumeration of NetBIOS information. I'm glad you joined me for this nugget. I hope this has been informative for you, and I'd like to thank you for viewing.